Within modern society, sadly, the work of road transport is increasingly underestimated. Despite this activity being vital for literally keeping the global economy moving, the crucial role of truck drivers in the daily activities of anyone is often overlooked. Such is its importance that would only take a couple of days of inactivity for this industry to paralyze the contemporary lifestyle in which we operate. But the issue doesn't stop there. This great importance is multiplied when it comes to its influence in military matters. In these operations, not having trucks and operators capable of supplying food, ammunition and fuel would render even the best trained and equipped army useless. A case where this was reflected was in the intervention of an American convoy that allowed the Allies to advance throughout Europe without setbacks. Stay with us and discover the story. To understand more about this story, we need to go back to the Normandy landings on June 6, 1944. This day was also known as D-Day, and not only represented a military challenge, but was also a monumental feat in terms of logistics, because it required a successful landing with a huge amount of supplies and equipment, something that required a really long planning time. As it often happens even in the best plans, adversities, which tend to arise sporadically and suddenly, made it clear that the operation would become even more complex from that moment on. As the Allied troops advanced into France, it became evident that resupplying combat lines would be a serious problem, if not properly addressed. The reasons for its high difficulty were several. Firstly, the railway networks were destroyed even before the Normandy landings. Ironically, this was initially caused by the Allies themselves, in an attempt to destabilize German transportation, staunchly rejecting the idea of using trains. Secondly, by the time the troops began their advance, the number of ports and strategic logistics points was insufficient, causing more supplies to remain in makeshift warehouses in Normandy. Another reason why this issue needed urgent attention was caused by military strategy and logistics specialists themselves. In their attempt to advance and recover territories quickly, generals ordered their troops to spread out to cover the largest possible area. This wouldn't have been such a serious problem if it weren't for the fact that the main force deployed was the armored division, causing Allied tanks to advance at desperate paces, consuming 1.4 million liters of gasoline per day. True to the saying that desperate times call for desperate measures, the Allied forces had no choice but to resort to delivering supplies to the front lines through truck convoys, thus creating a complex logistical system named the Red Ball Express. Its name comes from a peculiar fact that the cargo trucks participating in this convoy were marked with a small red ball at the front, and the loads they transported were considered top priority, so the journey had to be as fast as possible. The Red Ball Express began its operations on August 25, 1944, after a personnel mobilization that took only 36 hours, which is an extremely short time for a logistical operation of such magnitude. Although only 67 companies had participated at the start of the operation, more quickly joined, increasing the number to 132 companies in just four days. These companies managed to mobilize nearly 6,000 trucks from the beginning, with a workforce of 23,000 men, including mechanics and drivers. The backbone that kept this mega project standing were the large trucks that participated. The unit that had the most participation was the GMC CCKW model, also nicknamed Jimmy due to its 2.5-ton cargo capacity and its 6x6 chassis configuration. Under its hood was a six-cylinder 4.4-liter gasoline engine capable of generating a power output ranging between 90 and 100 kilometers per hour. Although its performance quickly won the sympathy of the drivers, there were also other models involved, some to a lesser extent than others. Among these models were the light off-road vehicles of the Dodge WC series, which are well known and are part of American popular culture for their relevance during this period. While these units had a payload capacity of up to one ton less, in terms of reliability, there was really no other truck that matched it. In addition to this model, it was also common to see Diamond T ballast tractors, used to tow disabled equipment 
and the Small Willies MB, which served as escorts for the convoy. If you've reached this point in the video and enjoyed it, we would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. The truckers had to travel only two routes starting from the city of St. Lou, one heading to Charters and the other to Somesus, located south and east of Paris respectively. The total distance was approximately 250 kilometers, which although for modern standards may seem very short, with the technical limitations of the time and the obstacles that arose from the conflict, it took more than 54 hours of continuous driving to complete. Among the main factors for this to happen were the speed limitations imposed at 40 km per hour. The aim of prohibiting exceeding this limit was to keep the load safe, as trucks were often overloaded up to twice their permitted weight. However, as expected, over time this limit was ignored, so drivers usually reached speeds between 90 and 100 km per hour. Despite the meticulously planned route which aimed to provide gender mere posts in strategic areas, repair workshops, kitchens, and even places for bathing, the extensive driving hours forced operators to drive at a forced march. Each truck usually had a pair of operators who took turns resting. However, although drivers could switch, they couldn't sleep due to the intense noise of the truck itself. So they could rest properly for a maximum of one hour. As if that weren't enough, Another implication that increased the difficulty was the need to cover the headlights at night to minimize light exposure and avoid being targeted by sporadic German planes attacking the convoy. Additionally, Browning M2 machine guns were mounted on some units. Although the weakened transport troops and the trucks constantly pushed to their limits didn't offer much resistance. Overcoming every adversity, the Red Ball Express managed to operate for 82 consecutive days, with the final convoy reaching its destination on November 16, 1944. Throughout its operation, approximately 500,000 tons of supplies were transported, with a mobilization of up to 900 vehicles and 12,500 tons of materials on the busiest days. Fortunately, when the Allies managed to take the port of Antwerp, Belgium, and the railway structure was operational again the trucks and their drivers were able to rest. It is entirely undeniable that the drivers who worked on this enormous logistics operation are considered anonymous heroes. Without the commitment and sacrifice of each of the people involved, it would have been impossible to achieve the progress and rapid advancement that was experienced at the time. Although unfortunate, this work did not have the impact and recognition that would make it so commemorated today. At the time, movies were even made commemorating this great feat. What did you think of this mega logistics operation? Do you think there are transports like this today? Would you like to see or participate in something like this nowadays? Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it and want more similar content, please subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to visit our secondary channel, Gear Unlimited where you'll find a wide variety of topics. We appreciate your support and interest. Keep on trucking and stay tuned for more.